Today, we start Module 2, Analysis of Algorithm Efficiencies and Brute Force Method. In the Project 1, I just assign you the first two methods, the first two algorithms to evaluate the polynomials. They are the Brute Force Method. In this module, so we will learn a few more uh, brute force, you know, examples using brute force method. Yeah. So very simple. Yeah. All right. Part A, efficiency measurements and growth functions. Two concepts. Yeah. 8.1, selection sort. Yeah. First, let's start with our problem number four, sort and array. In this class, we will learn several sorting algorithms. So this is the first one, selection sort. So let's look at the algorithm first. The problem, uh, given an array in this way, uh, how to sort it in ascending order. So. The problem we are quite familiar with, actually, you had some experience on sorting algorithms. So I believe you learned bubble sort. You know the bubble sort, right? In the data structure, 20 to 50. In that class, you learned the bubble sort. Later, so we will review that bubble sort another time. So we compare with the selection sort. Yeah. But in this class, we will learn several. Uh, the reason why we study the sorting problem to get multiple different solutions. There are some very good reasons. Later, I will explain these reasons. Yeah. All right. So. Let's start with the problem itself, the problem type sort. Remember, I mentioned that three basic problem types. First one. What's the first one? Uh, search, right? Search. Second one, selection problem. Well, here, selection sort, selection problem, different. <laughs> Do not get confused. The second type, selection problem. The third one, sort. Yeah. Here, the third type, sort. And we learn selection sort. Yeah. So the selection problem, selection sort, you know, two different things. Yeah. All right, so reference, I give you in the textbook, the section page number here. Uh, you can study by yourself. Next, let's look at the question. Yeah. Look at the analysis. In the general problem solving, yeah, find an algorithm from our experience. In the usual problem solving in the real world, how do we solve new problems? Usually, we rely on our experience. If you do not have a lot of experience, then it will be very hard for you to solve given real world computing problems. Here, I use this simple example to explain importance of the experience. When we start, we need to have something to build on. Right? So our experience is the foundation. We start to build a new solution on top of it. Right? Yeah. Here. All right. How do we use our experience? Okay. All right. We, uh, here, the experience is this. Look at this question. Currently, for this class, we have not collect, collected 
a lot of experience, right? So we only we just learned module one. That's all our experience there, right? Module one experience. But there is some useful thing in the module one, so we can use it now here. Look at this. The question: How to design an algorithm based on the minimum problem? Why I talk about the minimum problem because that's our experience. That's the experience related to our current problem. Okay, related to our current problem. Yeah. You may not see it immediately yeah, because it is not that obvious. Yeah. So you need to really try to get into it. Yeah. Really try to explore it. You know, then you can see it. Yeah. So let's do that part. Yeah. Explore properties. We need to explore the properties in this problem, and I try to try to find some interesting rule there. So then we use it to solve the problem. Okay. Then now here we make this assumption. So usually when we do analysis, we can make reasonable assumptions here. If the array is sorted, we can assume the array is sorted. So we try to get some insight here another time. The insight, insight. We try to get some insight. So if the array is sorted, what property can we get? Yeah. Here another small assumption. So we assume. All the elements in the given array are distinct. Although sometimes in the real world applications, we may have the situation we have duplicate elements, repeated duplicate elements. So it's okay. Now we can easily fix that situation. Yeah, but for our discussion, in order to make it. Easier, so we can make this assumption. After we solve the problem, then we can remove this assumption. Then you know, fix the remaining part. Yeah. All right. So here, for simplicity, so let us assume the sorted array like this. Then we try to examine its property first. Remember. This is our experience, so we can use that experience. The minimum. Yeah. All right. Can we say a zero is the minimum of all the array? Right? Can we say that? Yes. Very obvious. A zero, the minimum of the whole array. All right. After that, we remove. X zero from the consideration. Okay, yeah, because we know it's the minimum, so we take it away. Now, then for the remaining elements, right? You can see a one is the minimum of the remaining elements. So another minimum. Okay, we'll keep doing this. The next round, remove a one. A two is the minimum of the remaining elements, right? So you can see the sorted array, the sorted array, uh, has this minimum property that is connected to the minimum problem. All right, so that's our observation. Next, we can use this observation to produce a solution. So, let me show you how to produce that solution. Okay. All right. So, suppose this is array of locations, locations, destination array with loc, you know. 
empty locations like this. Then I put element by element into this array to get it sorted. Every time I put one element in it, you know, one by one and eventually get it the whole array sorted. All right, so let me show you how to put element by element into this array. First, let us find the minimum of the whole array. Can we do it? Yep. Yeah. So we solve it. That's our experience in module one. So we use that solution. Find the minimum of the whole array. Okay. Then that element, we have it. Let's drop it here, our main zero. That is the main zero. So we put into the destination array the first location. How about that? Yeah, the minimum must appear the first one in the destination array. Okay, that's correct. Yeah. And we call it in place. So we put this element in place. Yeah, the meaning. So you can see easily, right? So specifically, it is like this. If the element is placed at the location at a position when the array is sorted. That's the in place. Yeah. Right position. When the array is sorted, that position, you know, we call it this element is in place. Okay? Yeah. All right. So the first round processing, we put one element in place. Yeah. Similarly, second one. So we work on the remaining elements and find the minimum in the remaining elements. Okay, yeah, we can do it using our previous solution, main one, and put it in place. Next round, main two in place, and so on. Okay? And finally, if the last round only one element in place, then we just drop it immediately. So we get a whole array sorted because all the elements are in place. In place. So here we have this simple fact. Where all the elements are in place, then the whole array is sorted. All right. Yeah. So we get a solution. Yeah. For the analysis, it is pretty easy. So we can do it quickly here by just the one formula. Yeah. If we count the total number of comparisons, we have this formula. Yeah. Because when we put the first element in place, we need this many comparisons, n minus one. Remember, how many comparisons do we need to find the minimum element, a minus one, right? The next round, remaining element, find the minimum, a minus two, and so on, okay? Yeah. The second to last, one comparison. The last one, zero. Last one, we, we do not need a comparison. So they're adding together, so we get this formula, okay? Yeah. Here, let me, give you a simple question so you can think about it. Yeah. The, can you get the best case, worst case, average case efficiencies, number of comparisons in these three cases? Yeah. Later, I will talk about the answer. Yeah. So you can think about a little bit. Yeah. All right, so we finish our 8.1 of module 2.